Hello, students. Hopefully everybody's doing well. Um, <laughs> get into the video. I'm so excited to, I mean, this, this week has been just, it's been crazy. So um, I'm sure that you guys are, are done with module 16. I want to first give you all a round of applause for finishing up your chemistry year. Um, I know it's been a pretty different and in certain instances challenging and developing. And I'm glad that um, I was able to be a part of this uh, journey with you. Uh, so it's been really exciting for me to, to teach uh, chemistry with you guys. And I'm glad that uh, we're ending it in this particular chapter. Um, I'm glad that you guys have been able to learn something I have seen transitions and transitions of 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 information between all of you. I've seen your labs change, the way you write your labs. And again, I'll give you these kudos when we're in class, but it's just been amazing to see the transition between uh, where you guys were in the beginning and then now where you guys are now. Um, it's not always about the test grades and things like that, but it's about how are you learning? How are you retaining information? How are you um, developing your skills as chemists, <laughs> uh, but uh, your ability to be experimental, your ability to ask questions about the world around you and and discern and use discernment in your your level, your thinking ability. So uh, truly, I'm glad um, to be a part of that journey, to teach you in that journey. And we have one more module left. So by this time, um, you should be done with the chapter. Um, you definitely should be done with the chapter and you should be now kind of getting your materials ready for the test on Wednesday. Uh, this video is going to be an overview video of, uh, reduction and oxidation reactions. This is the, we're going to do some, I'll go over here. I'll go to the next slide actually. And we're gonna do prayer of all, as always, keywords and definitions as always, rules, and then we'll go over the answers to the review. Uh, we'll probably do, I'll probably end up doing some practice problems on, on Sunday. You all should be doing the practice problems. You all should be writing down um, your notes and, and what you're gonna need for the test. We'll do a little bit of review on Monday, and then we'll have a very similar structure from um, on, on Wednesday. Um, on Wednesday, we are going to just take the test. We don't have a presentation um, to do, so we're just going to take the test on Wednesday. So you'll have just about the full hour for the test. So that's actually a really good thing. So um, yeah, let's get right into it. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these kids. I thank you, Lord God, that we are um, coming to the finish line. Some of them are just about there after they take this test, they're 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 about finished because they've finished their presentations. And Lord, I just thank you for these kids. I thank you for your uh, love for them and care and how you've continued to lead and guide them in their journeys. And I pray that you continue. I, I pray, Lord God, that some of the things that they've learned this year that they can use in certain instances of their life, maybe not now, but later on, I pray, Lord God, that it pops up in their mind every now and then about the way that you have designed this world. And that you, as the creator of all things, um, material, liquid, solid, gas, we understand um, that you are the author and finisher of our faith. And I just thank you for all that you do for us, for me as a teacher, for them as students. Um, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So let's get right to it. This one's not going to be too long. Um, so just going over the keywords and, de and definitions, I've already given you a small sheet for um, for, for what you're supposed to know and questions on that sheet. And then, you know, again, you can bring that into me on Monday and you can give that to me. I, some of you have already sent me it. So, so yeah, just going over this is kind of just review. Oxidation numbers uh, are the charge that an atom in a molecule would develop if the most electronegative atoms in the molecule took the shared electron from less electronegative uh, atoms. We understand this to be true already. Um, Oxidation, we understand what that means, the process by an atom loses an electron. And then we understand what reduction is. Reduction is the process which an atom gains. So I've 
kind of put that there, loses and gains. So it's very, very easy and quick. What does oxidation loses? What does reduction gains, right? So we have this, this back and forth between atoms um, and elements. So together, what does that create? Redox reactions. Okay, we understand that. Know the, know the uh, acronym LEO and know the acronym GER, GER, right? LEO, GER, GER. So just have a baseline understanding of what that is and what that means. Uh, a little bit of a uh, continued a node. What is a node is a negative side of a battery. Cathode is the positive side of the battery. Uh, electrodes are the metal that connects strips for the electrical contact between wires. Um, they get about two different beakers. They go over that in the experiment. This um, particular this particular chapter was was really great when we're thinking about putting it all together, um, especially when it comes to chemical equations and and getting a lot more technical when it came to uh, the react the different types of reactions that uh, solids and uh, liquids go through. So this was actually I really like this chapter. Some of the rules I'm going to go over this. I'm going to single out some of the rules that you should have that are kind of away, and then the rules that are next to each other that you you honestly should have near you at all times. Um, one of the rules was the sum of all oxidation numbers in a molecule must equal the charge of that molecule. You should know this. This is something that you should know uh, because as you're putting together, say you have a chemical equation, right? Mg plus uh, Ca, calcium, magnesium plus calcium, right? You have all of these. And then how that reaction takes place, that forward reaction takes place, right? We want to be able to have some of these rules next to us as these chemical processes are taking um, action. So, so understand that as you are having your understanding this at a, at a deeper level, you have all of your rules next to you. So if you have magnesium or you have uh, uh, iron, any of these that are that are, are making these chemical reactions take place, you can have, okay, magnesium means plus one. Okay, um, uh, fluorine means, okay, minus two. You should have those near you so that you can make quick instances and references to uh, the questions. So that's what I mean by having your rules next to you. The next slide is dealing with determining oxidation numbers. So that's why I had that one rule by itself. And now we're getting into the rules of determining different types of oxidation numbers. Uh, always true. Now they did go through this and always true, usually applied, but is usually true. And then number seven, which is um, last rule, but not often true. So pretty sure you should all know these already. I don't have to go through all of them. Um, they're in your book. But as you know, um, most of these here will apply. Just about all of them will apply. And I would, I would have these rules. I, I wanted to put them like this so you could take a screenshot, write them down in this way too, so that you can have these as quick references to your um, to your understanding. Because you're going to have chemical reactions, right? You're going to have a lot of these and you're going to have to go back and forth trying to remember, okay, what was positive two molecules that contain more than one atom? Okay, what is negative one oxidation number in molecules that contain one type of atom? Okay, plus negative, okay, that equals this. All right, then we have to think about the sum, right? We go back to the sum of all oxidation numbers in a molecule must equal the charge of that molecule, right? We, we go back to that, that definitive rule at the end. So all of these rules are going to apply in somewhat shape or form, and you have to be able to make quick references to them um, because as you have the length of the test. Um, so I'm not gonna go through all of these. I'm just gonna have those there. I'll go back. You can take a screenshot of this one. Today, my drink of choice is cafe. And then I'll, you can take a screenshot of this one as well. Oh, if, as you don't know, I'm, I'm on top of the world kind of here. So um, just thought I didn't make a reference to that earlier. So yes, uh, now an important characteristic of the reduction and oxidation reactions is that when a redux reaction occurs, there will always be at least one atom that is oxidized and at least one atom that is reduced. So this process is always happening um, within uh, a reaction. There's always something that occurs. Uh, and, and this is, in these reactions that we have in this chapter, we understand this to also be true. 
So this is this is another one uh, that we have to remember. Now, going towards some of the questions that we that I asked of you, um, which we'll probably do another one like this on Monday, just to kind of gather some insights and understanding about what uh, we need to what we need to understand for the test so I can really, so we can just really burn it into our systems. Uh, define oxidation number. We went through that already. Oxidation number is the charge that an atom and a molecule would develop if the most electronegative atoms in the molecule took shared electrons from the less. So taking, right, the most taking from the least, the most taking from the least. Have that as a quick reference, the most taking from the least. What must the oxidation numbers of all atoms add up to? The sum of oxidation numbers must be equal to the charge of the molecules. All right. Oxidation and reduction is oxidation is the process loses electrons. Reduction process gains. Loses, gains, loses, gains. Would there be a case in which oxidation could occur without reduction? No. Oxidation can never happen without reduction because a substance cannot lose an electron unless there's something around that can gain it. So that's very interesting. Oxidation can never occur without reduction. So these two can never happen without each other because a substance that cannot lose, cannot lose an electron unless there's something around it that will gain it. These processes cannot occur. Uh, one of the six rules, one of the ones I put here is group 1A. Metals, things like lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, have always oxidation numbers of positive one molecules that contain more than one atom. These are rules that are set in stone that we're going to need to do and go through as we are um, getting different questions. So we're going to have to make references to these. And you know, don't be afraid. You write out all of these so you have an under you have an understanding. You have the periodic table there, right? Write these down for quick references so that you so that you get it. Some of the other questions: um, Why are batteries rechargeable and others are not? So these are some other uh, review questions. The internal structure of most batteries gets destroyed as the reaction proceeds. There's no way to preserve the destruction, uh, so the battery is not rechargeable. So that's your answer. Why are some batteries rechargeable and others are not? The internal structure of batteries gets destroyed. That's mainly it as the reaction takes place. So there's no way to reverse the destruction of the battery that is not rechargeable. Now, name two differences between an alkaline uh, dry cell and a lead acid battery. The alkaline cell has no aqueous uh, solutions, but the lead battery cell does. Now, the lead acid battery can also be recharged. The alkaline cell cannot be recharged. So these are two definitive um, different types of solutions that we can attribute and, and, and their processes. So, so this is basically it. We have, we've gone through some of the key, I think the main thing in this chapter, right? The main thing in this chapter is understanding the rules. So that's my key for this particular chapter is truly just understanding the rules. And these rules are going to be, are going to apply and all in the, in on the test heavily, um, understanding the definitions, that's just kind of just going all the way through and just reading through and being able to understand some of these quick definitions. But I honestly believe that your the rules are going to be very, 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 very important. So if I'm saying that, then you should take it that serious as well. Understanding these rules, understanding how they apply to each atom and element and molecule that we're gonna be dealing with. Okay, so let's finish up. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for today. Thank you for strength and guidance. I pray for each and every one of these students. If um, if any of them are having any difficulty, Lord God, I pray that you illuminate their minds with answers and understanding. I thank you for all that you've given them. I mean, giving them life and giving them the ability to think. There are a lot of students and children out there that do not and are not afforded the privilege that they are. So Lord, I just thank you, Heavenly Father, for, for the ability to be able to just be on their journey with them, to help them and to lead them and guide them. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. There you go. Have a wonderful weekend. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Uh, I am here for you, like always. Uh, all right, bye-bye.